Hey guys, today we're going to talk about Alex Bracini and he is playing at GP Phoenix. And not only is he playing at GP Phoenix, he's winning big. So he recently beat Cedric Phillips and Cedric Phillips tweeted about it. Didn't get too many responses, but he doesn't seem very remorseful. He has been banned multiple times for cheating. And you never know if he's going to cheat again because someone who's been banned twice for cheating is likely to continue to cheat. They're already kind of doubling down. At the, at the point, it's not even double down. It's a triple down. So they're tripling down. And every time that someone plays against him, he has special attention. And there's a judge. And the judge has to watch him like a hawk, making magic less fun. So why is this guy still allowed to play magic? Uh, it comes to a very simple, simple philosophy that Meryl has always had. And you need a villain. MTG headquarters is a villain. It's very easy to cast him aside and say, hey, this white male is attacking a white female, a cosplayer. And the cosplayer for whatever reason has decided to go into nursing school but she's leaving magic because of mtg headquarters we need to ban him for life for alex it's a more it's the villain they're always used to so mtg headquarters is kind of this out of the box villain that they're not comfortable with alex the villain type for alex has always existed in magic mike long I've said this many times, and it bears repeating. Mero, the face of Magic the Gathering, wants Mike Long in the Hall of Fame. And Mero will admit that Mike Long has cheated and was considered the villain of Magic. There was no... You cannot have a John Finkel without a Mike Long. And you cannot have a LSV without a Alex Bocchini or Cedric without Alex Bocchini. You need... And they... You, you ask why is Jared Bouchard, there's so many different cheaters in this game who have done well. To do well, they had to practice, meaning they were not caught at other stages and they were only caught on camera. Now, a lot of you are, may not understand why, why would they be caught on camera? When did they know like, hey, I shouldn't cheat? I think it's so natural for them. It's part of the game. It's part of the game. So for them to not cheat on camera would be for them to not play their ideal game. They might not even view it as cheating. The first time Alex came back before the second ban, he was very arrogant and he said, did you miss me? And when they asked him what his favorite card was, he chose Explore, the card that he was caught cheating on camera with. No regret, no remorse, and just absolute, you know, it, the audacity for him to say that at the time when and then get banned again is quite interesting that he's still allowed to play magic and he's still allowed to go to these high level events so when you let repeat cheaters in this isn't like FNM we, again we shouldn't have cheaters at FNM but the impact of a random cheater FNM is not as much as when Alex wins and wins and wins. People who are newer to the game may feel like, oh, this is the way to get ahead. So they ban people for non-tournament re related stuff repeatedly, um, but allow cheaters to keep playing. That is absolutely insane. The bans today are mostly used as a tool to punish players that did something to hurt Wizards financially. Um, it feels like the punishments are about PR and not about professional play. Cheating does have very little impact outside the MTG community. So if you're new and you don't want to play pro magic, then you know you just play with your friends. There's not really cheating involved. I think that it is a very compelling argument to make that there's two type of villains there is the type of villain that will impact financially the bottom line of wizard of coast and how many products they can sell 
And there's this type of villain that with, although bad, we can root against him, but will very little financial impact. And when we ban him for the third time, which I'm assuming is going to happen soon, everyone congratulates Mero. And I think that's one of my biggest pet peeves is sometimes it looks like Mero's doing stuff just to get like digital likes, like social media likes, right? Um, I made a video, I don't know how controversial the video was, it's aired Monday, I'm making this Sunday, the video will probably go up Tuesday, and it, I think that's the main problem of this whole Magic the Gathering right now, and why it's so different, is because instead of like worrying about making a great story, we are, we have a different template where the great story now has to include X minority, Y minority, and Z minority, in fact, we didn't worry about that. It just came together that it was the Wetterlight crew. You look at the Wetterlight crew and they're pretty diverse. We didn't need to push them. They just were naturally that diverse. And they were great. Mine, this is my favorite story. So I think, yeah, the villain that they want to create has always existed. Mike Long, Mark Justice, David Williams, which they brought back. So clearly they don't feel like he cheated or... Uh, Sato, who cheated. They there are some people who Jared Jared will be back soon enough. I'm sure that after his suspension is up, he'll be back. And these people don't affect how many booster packs they sell because ninety five percent of all booster packs are purchased by casual players who have no. They don't want to be pro tour. There's no livelihood you're still living with your parents and that's okay. Like I've said that it's okay if you want to live with your parents and save money for a home or something. That makes a lot of sense, but you got to have a plan. So if your plan is to be a pro magic player, I don't see at any point in time that you're going to move out. If your plan is to work at Walmart and then pick up shifts and become a manager and then become a buyer, yeah, eventually you'll make enough money to move out even at Walmart if you work hard enough. But a pro magic play, I, I just don't see it. So, yeah, that's the uh, that's my explanation as to why Alex is still winning and still, you know, he has a lot of support among the pro community. They look out for one another. Like Efro says, you fold, otherwise we'll come after you. It's very clicky. And Alex is one of the highlights. You know, people like him. He... All accounts, I've never talked to him, all accounts would indicate he's just the nicest guy. And you see that a lot in life. When someone wants to sell you something that's not useful, like a vacuum, they're very nice to you. When they want to sell you a service that's not useful, they're very nice to you. And that's what Alex is doing. Alex is being nice to you, so you don't look at him as a cheater, but you look at him as you know a nice guy, and then he cheats you. The, the very fact that he's still around makes me question as the professional nature of the Pro Tour or the GPs. It seems very strange to me that you look at other sports and you look at cheaters in other areas. And yes, it's sports, not magic. But they're not... I, you just can't... You can't come from a, back from a band twice. Right, like, how many people, that's just ridiculous, right? Like, you've been banned two times already, and you're still playing. I don't get it. First, the, the point, I, the, I really don't understand what would, why Alex would want to come back when he, has face, he faces such heavy scrutiny, and he faces so many of these jokes, and he's... Just the butt of every joke about cheating. Why would he come back? And I, I think the answer is he wins. He can't stop winning. He can't stop cheating. It's really impressive what he's done here. He's nine and one. At, he was nine and one at GP Phoenix. He was being covered, you know, top tables, and he beat another famous Magic celebrity. Or Cedric Phillips, he's a winner. 
and that's what people like. Uh, people are um, people don't get it. Um, people don't understand why this is bad. Um, it's bad because when someone at the pro tour level cheats, then someone at the F and M feels like it's okay. Pre-release cheating is very rampant in this Magic: The Gathering, especially at pre-release. And I think it's because when you look at the punishment, it's not severe enough. The fact that he's back already so soon is. And some people have been banned for life, MTG headquarters, for just a mean tweet. I look at the two and I say to myself, wow. But if you look at it from a financial aspect, then yeah, MTG headquarters did cause a lot more damage than Alex did. We also did some good for the offenders, the sexual offenders in the judge program, which are now gone. And I'm sure that some judges who are or some offenders who may have wanted to be a judge are looking at this again and saying, nope, not for me because I'm going to get called out. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.